Morning everyone, so great to be with you as we continue to look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3. My name is Ben and my family have, and I have been part of the church for seven years. So today we're looking at verse 6 of chapter 3. A time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away. And it's that first line that I want to focus on. So, a time to search. I don't know about you, but it feels to me like the time to search is always. Everyone I know seems to be searching. No one is not searching. As a group of people at a certain point in our history, our way of journeying through life seems to be via a continual cycle of searching. Searching for the next, the bigger, the better. We spend so much time searching, dreaming, striving. The new car, the new job, the bigger salary, the better church, the perfect social post, the new kitchen, the best small batch coffee, the new brand of ethical clothing, the better school, and on and on and on. And at a surface level, it all feels insignificant or harmless, just a way to move forward, to progress. But below the surface, this constant searching and striving for what we don't yet have is often rooted in something deeper, something like recognition or the need for control or for belonging or for acceptance. On the surface, we're searching for a new job and a bigger salary, but what we're really searching for is status and recognition. And look, there's nothing wrong in having your bathroom decorated or getting your kids into the right school or going for that new, higher paid job. There's nothing wrong with searching deeper either, exploring what makes us us. Searching is part of our life and part of our culture, but searching for and striving relentlessly for these things and hoping to find for long-term fulfillment, satisfaction, joy, even peace in them, is where I think we're getting in a mess and where I think Jesus is breaking his heart. Because as our searching becomes our future and what we're striving for becomes our reality, we so often find ourselves more and more a slave to things like money or work with less time, less freedom, hemmed in, tired and exhausted, separated from God. And I'm not just talking about what I've seen in others. This relentless search and striving was a large factor in the breakdown I had a few years ago. The constant searching, striving, trying to find greater fulfillment and recognition through work or my church or sports or social media, my marriage, friendships. Not all I was searching for was wrong and my life wasn't bad in any way, but the hope and the expectation that I placed on all these material, superficial things and the level of fulfilment I needed from them was way too high and I had nothing solid to fall back on. So if the searching and the striving is constant, inevitable, sometimes necessary and seemingly ingrained in our cultural DNA, then perhaps the question is we should be asking is not when is the time to search, but how can we search well? How as individuals can we journey through our superficial and fundamental needs, our longings, our desires, and come to the right place? I think part of the answer can be found in how and what we give up, and I'll come, to, come on to that later. But for me, the part of the answer for me can be found in scripture, surprise, surprise, and in our attitudes. So first to scripture. Matthew 6 verse 33 says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you. And Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. What I'm learning more and more in my faith journey is that just knowing these passages is not enough. Nowhere near. I've got to learn to go beyond the head and the heart knowledge and start to practice them. How in my searching, in our searching and striving, can we start to actually seek God's kingdom view first in our lives? How can we start leaning on his understanding? The words are truth, but the truth can only become reality when we start to live them out. And secondly, my attitude, our attitude. In my journey, I put me at the center and said, God, you tag along. I'll press forward in my own strength and you come along for the ride. I place God in the centre of my kingdom rather than placing myself in the centre of his kingdom. Again, I don't think I'm alone in this. In the world we live in, the kingdom of the self is the empire we are all encouraged to build. Brand Ben and my needs and my desires are what matters most. 
well, look, I think we need to rally against this worldview and try and be people who continually place ourselves and evaluate our search in the values, in the teaching, in the wisdom and the perfection of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So what part does giving up play in all this? Well, I think the challenge of our always on, 24 seven, digitally driven world is that slowing down, giving up, stopping is not easy. It can be scary and often it's seen as a negative. Also, there is no way we can spend weeks, months, years going full throttle and expect to be able to give up or stop and then suddenly switch off and hear from God. It's like pushing a child on a roundabout. The roundabout spins and it goes faster and faster and faster and faster until suddenly your child shouts, I want to get off! And they want to get off right now. And if you've ever seen a tri child try and get off a fast moving roundabout, it doesn't usually end well. So you have to slow the roundabout down. And even when they hop off, they often spend a few minutes staggering around trying to reorientate themselves. So over the summer, I read The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer. He's an American pastor and a cultural commentator. The book focuses on four spiritual disciplines or rhythms of life drawn from the life of Jesus. The two that really spoke to me and I think are relevant to our searching and our giving up are Sabbath, and silence and solitude. Sabbath or Shabbat in Hebrew literally means to stop and is something that for the last eight weeks we as a family have been trying to practice. From Friday evening meal to Sunday morning we, Em and I, stop work and by work I mean our paid work and our homework like gardening or cleaning. We put away our mobiles and we try and step off the roundabout, take some time away from the world and focus as a family on God. We use this time to talk to each other, spend quality time with the kids, enjoy our favourite foods, enjoy his creation, basically realign, reset and change the search terms. And we've by no means perfected this and at the start the kids thought we were nuts but even in the last couple of months Sabbath has become a treasured part in our week. Slowly but surely just taking this small amount of time out is changing me and changing M and our family, our perspective, our relationship with God and our relationship with the world. And secondly, silence and solitude. Well, in Matthew 3, we read about Jesus' baptism. And in chapter 4, we read that he is immediately led by the Spirit into the desert. And the Greek word for desert is the eremos, which has multiple meanings. It could mean desert or deserted place or solitary place or quiet place. And what's really interesting for me about this is that the starting place, the ignition point for Jesus' ministry was not the marketplace, but the quiet place, the Eremos. He spent 40 days praying and fasting and gaining the spiritual strength to fight the devil, to send him away and then move out from there into his future. Imagine the fresh, fresh perspective, the realignment, the strength to our search God could give us if we spent more time in the quiet place. And I suppose again the challenge is, how do we begin to practice this? Well, here's four Ansel-inspired starters. Number one, give yourself permission to slow down, to give up, to stop. It's not a weakness, it's the start of your preparation for what's next. Secondly, Em and I have been listening to Lectio 365 in the mornings. It's an app produced by 24-7 Prayer and it helps medita meditative reflection on the Psalms and other passages of the Bible. It only takes 10 minutes per day. Thirdly, we try and carve out an hour during our Sabbath to lie down and listen to God. And look, sometimes we fall asleep or sometimes we just hear Laiji smashing his drums. But like, us, like I said, we're trying to give God the space to speak to us. And fourthly, I'm trying to go out on more walks, trying to be in silence on those walks. No podcasts, no sermons, no music, no calls, just silence. And look, we're on a journey with this as a family, but taking even this small amount of time to slow down, to stop, to give up the day-to-day -day search and strive nature of our culture is already having an impact. So in summary, I believe that searching is part of life, part of who we are in our culture. We're all wired to do it. But maybe now is the point in history where our searching is becoming an overwhelming, over-consuming part of our lifestyle. 
fueling our surface needs, wants and desires, and becoming the place that we try and find meaning to the deeper searches in our lives. And therefore, we need to make sure that we search well, that we seek first his kingdom. We move from knowing uh, to practicing the teachings of the Bible. We carve out time to intentionally give up and surrender to God. We step off the roundabout, allowing ourselves a Sabbath and some silence and some solitude. And we work hard to place ourselves in God's kingdom rather than trying to make him part of ours. Have a great week, everyone. May God bless you and I hope we'll see you soon.